<laughs> Alright, so the last what we're going to try to talk about, this last part is the, the, the little bit of the tools of trade. And uh, maybe this one will kind of open up a little bit more as we talk specifically about like, how to communicate grade levels. You know, grade level matters, how to talk about things at those particular levels. So maybe we'll get into that a little bit. But let's start with a quick comparison. Baseball because of the smells, the sights, and the things. 
And he said that there's a way in our faith that the beauty, because God makes all things beautiful, leads us to God. So what is true, what is good, and what is beautiful always leads us to God. And so for those who are new to the faith, for those who are don't, don't really know what it is, beauty helps us to, to lead them to God who makes things beautiful. Uh, I did a teacher in service a couple years ago. And I told the, the, fam, the teachers who live out in the Berkshires, I said, you know, you live in a beautiful part of the country. So when you're driving, when you're driving home after this, maybe just take a look at what's around you. And instead of just stopping at, wow, that's beautiful, move one step past that and thank God who makes all things beautiful. So it's one thing to look at beauty, but we want to make sure that when we're teaching the faith, that we're taking beauty and we're directing that to, right, to the God that makes all things beautiful. It's the difference between what I call a day six Catholic and a day seven Catholic. On day six, God made everything, and it was beautiful. The sixth day. It stops at creation. Day seven, the Lord blesses it, right? So moving to that next day, moving from beauty to the one who is beautiful and makes all things beautiful. That's something that we very easily can do with our kids and should do with our kids in a catechism. Help them see beauty and not stop there, but thank the God who makes all things beautiful. It's a simple way to pray. It's a simple frame of mind. If God exists, then the same. The other is, is, is this thought of goodness. We see in uh, public schools specifically, there's a lot of character education programs. They talk a lot about character and things like that. But we don't, we don't stop at, at character, right? We look at virtue, which is uh, kind of, we don't really use this term anymore, we should. Because virtue is, is more than, than just like a character trait. Like virtue sometimes hurts. <laughs> to build virtue is not an easy thing to do. We have to fight against so many things that aren't good to get to virtue. And so another thing that's really easy to do with kids is to focus in on virtue. And again, leading them down to God through those virtues, right? So um, they have great virtue programs that are out there. But I noticed in a lot of catechetical materials that we don't talk about virtue. Virtue doesn't exist. They, they kind of pass over, right? So one thing that we did when I was a uh, principal in, in Alabama, Virginia, is we had a virtue program and we would focus, the entire community would focus on a virtue a month. And then we would celebrate those kids who best practice that virtue. And so we didn't just celebrate the academic achievement of the students, we actually celebrated this, this virtue. And I remember the one moment, uh, there was a girl, uh, she, was, she was fantastic, uh, but she was always in my office. She was <laughs> kind of ADHD-ish, yeah. And her mom happened to be the assistant principal. And so there were times she had to like hide her in the corner when her mom turned the corner. And, she got sent out of Spanish class every single time I knew when she had Spanish class. Um, but we were practicing the virtues our eighth grade year, and we were practicing the virtue of self-control. This was April or May of her last year. And she was a, a pretty solid AB student, just smart, smart girl, but she had no self-control. <laughs> no, none at all. Uh, my favorite memory of her, the second one, my second favorite memory, um, I was teaching algebra to that class because I always would teach one class as a principal. And I, I told her, I said, Listen, if you're ever having a tough time and you forgot to take your pill, just give me a sign. Give me a sign so I know. So I can either put you in the front or I, I can keep you on track where you need to. And there's one day, she's in the back, she's just, like she was completely disengaged. She's just drawn, 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 about five minutes left in class. 
She holds up this beautifully drawn sign. It says pill. <laughs> Obviously, I could say, well, you know, know your scripture and, and, and 